up. Oops. There we go. Plus, I'm giving everyone a chance to log on. There we go. Is that better, guys? Okay. <laughs> they make this way more difficult. Oh, yeah, now I'm good. Okay, very good. I don't know why it's uh, doing that. I, if you start the video sideways, it's supposed to go sideways, but apparently it doesn't want me to do that today. So I apologize for the, the narrow view. We still get the same information. Great. So welcome, everyone. I'm glad we're getting some people on here. Great. Thank you guys so much. You know, a little technical difficulty never hurt anyone. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get this light back on here. Perfect, okay. So, hello again, I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and I am, <coughs> excuse me, a family medicine physician who has worked with Dr. Joel Furman before, and I actually was his medical director for uh, the Boca Raton um, <clears throat> resort that we had going at clinic uh, back in two, early 2017. Uh, that was an adventure that was amazing. I learned a lot until um, it was uh, no longer available to, to be there. And now they've moved it to California and it's amazing there as well. I'm not working for them there, but did enjoy it. We had investors in uh, Florida that decided that they did not want to invest any longer and that's why it closed. But it was still an amazing opportunity. Some wonderful stories that came out of there, but I do want to share with you. I have lots of um, experience with Dr. Furman's program, being nutritarian and how to teach these type of things. So I want to make sure and share that with you. Um, but the important thing is that, you know, you'll hear a lot of doctors talk about what to eat, how to eat it, how often, what to avoid, but they never teach you how to do it on a budget. Okay, so when I switched um, my entire family literally overnight to a whole food plant-based diet seven years ago, I had three teenagers and a husband. Two of them were boys. They eat a lot of food, a lot, a lot of food. And I was like, wow, is this going to be more expensive? But actually it dropped $400 a month. Um, so as I was working with patients, I was working in Colorado at that time, and many of them were on a budget. I had a patient... Um, you know, patients who were on Medicaid, uh, they were on Medicare. We had one Walmart in our little town and then one kind of like a Kroger or a city market or a Publix type of store. So we didn't have a lot to choose from. We certainly didn't have a Whole Foods nearby, plus they're expensive, but the nearest Whole Foods, there was one Whole Food on the entire western side of Colorado and it was like two and a half hours away. So we had to be very practical. There weren't a lot of places to eat out, so we eat out, you know, we'd make a lot of food at home where the town that I lived in was about 20 minutes away from those two grocery stores. So actually, I had to drive 20 minutes just to even get to a decent grocery store at that time. So again, it was, you know, when you go, it's not like I could just jump in the, the car and, you know, in five minutes be at a grocery store and buy something. So to be very mindful of my choices and what I was doing. But when you say $400 a month, that's like getting a raise. So I think that's really important to point out that I have done this. And when I was in Florida, I went ahead of my family um, for about seven months. I was there by myself, and I thought it'd be a great time to experiment with budget as well. So the average um, stamp or food stamp um, or SNAP program individual, one adult in the U.S. gets about $7 a day. So I thought, well, can I do this on $7 a day? And you know what? It was actually very doable. And did I have the luxury of lots of different exotic foods? No, but I got the basics. I certainly met the nutritarian criteria and made some videos about that as well and share those with people. So it's really important that you understand, do not let the cost of food get in your way of actually eating healthy. Um, there are ways around it and I have 15 tips to help you with that, but I did wanna say one Dr. Furman quote and if you're familiar with Dr. Furman, he's very straightforward, but I love what he said here about this. He said, so if you don't, so don't you find it ironic, and he's talking, about, I'm sorry, but he's talking about the USDA the United States Department of Agriculture. So now you have to understand the whole idea of the USDA is to promote animal agriculture, but they're also in charge of our nutritional guidelines that are set forth that schools have to follow and public institutions. So I thought it would find, find this interesting, this quote, and I've used it before in other lectures. So don't you find it ironic that the program was designed by our own government promoted with our tax dollars and justified on the ground that it served the public interest. Our government spends over $20 billion on subsidies to support the beef and dairy industries, and this keeps the prices of these products artificially low. 
Therefore, we pay billions to promote the production of expensive, disease-causing foods, and then we pay the medical bills associated with eating these foods. Our tax dollars are actually used to make our society sicker and keep our health insurance costs high. So I think that's a perfect example why you may be confused and people go, well, why can't I go to McDonald's and buy, you know, a dollar hamburger? I think it's, I don't know if it's a dollar, it's somewhere in there. And then I have to go and I want to buy a pint of even conventional, you know, blueberries or strawberries. They're like $5 for like six to eight ounces. How is this possible? And that is why. Because if we let, you know, the natural course of events, you know, just the marketplace and we didn't have subsidies, that meat and that dairy would be so expensive. It would be on the opposite end of where our fruits and vegetables are. You know, we should be subsidizing these healthy foods and then, you know, making the, the ones that make us sick actually come to market and bear the prices of actually coming and then we'll have less of them. But anyway, I thought that would be interesting just to kind of set this, you know, the stage of where we're at and why we have to even have this discussion on the food and making it on a budget. Okay, so first of all, I'd like you guys to Think about some of the grocery stores that you uh, may frequent. I mentioned Walmart. They're certainly gathering more organic foods. They have a um, wider selection now. There's Kroger's, City Market, um, Aldi's is getting much more um, in line with um, organic foods. And then when I was in Florida, I did a lot of Aldi shopping. Um, so many other places, Fred Meyers. I've lived all over the country. So there's some really good grocery stores in most areas. Um, unless you live in a very... Um, I guess urban area and you have to travel by bus or something. I don't know your particular issues, but I do know that if you think about it far ahead in advance, even if you have to make those grocery store trips, you can do this on a budget. And I don't know if, how much you can budget, but I would certainly say $7 per person is doable. I'll lay that out there. So what's the first one? Well, first of all, you want to organize your kitchen and your refrigerator. I know this seems counterintuitive to well, what does that have to do with any for buying food, right? Well, let's think about it. If you don't know what you have, you may buy it again and again. So therefore you're wasting money. I don't know about you, but I have had spices in either drawers or in cabinets, typically cabinets, hiding. And then I was really excited to make a recipe and I was like, oh, I don't have this. And so then when I go to the store for the other ingredients, I'd buy a second one of the spice, which are not cheap either, three to four dollars, maybe even more. And then I would find out later, like, oh, it was hiding behind the big chili powder. And so those are things to keep in mind as well. Now, let's look at your refrigerator. How many of us have refrigerators that are, you know, jam-packed to different things? You know, some celery gets stuck in the back there or some other berries or something that we're looking for, a certain ingredient. And before you know it, it has already passed its... Um, actually safe to eat <laughs> you know there's like me some fungus growing on it and some other things not the type of fungus that you want to eat by the way but that would be something there is organize the refrigerator is there an area for your fruits your veggies you know um, non-dairy milks those type of things keeping food in the place and teaching your family to put it back in its place that is key as well the other thing <clears throat> to think about is what can you do to organize further so leaving out you know look at foods and see how um, you should be storing them certain foods should be stored on a counter certain foods should be stored in a drawer in the fridge certain foods should be kept in a, a dark um, dry place so i would start looking at whatever foods that you're consuming what is the optimal way of actually storing them because that will make them last longer the shelf life will be longer so then that way you're not wasting money buying food that has no longer been available for you to eat because it's past its ripeness okay so um, also there are some really really cool spice racks there's some that are magnetic that you can actually set on a cabinet and then they they give you the little spice um, jars that stick to that that's something to think about as well and then you can also there's a savory spice shop.com if you guys check that out there they actually will send you spices in a bag to fill it back up you just need to buy the glass container once and then you can use the um, spices from them and order just what you need that's the other thing there's nothing more frustrating than having to buy more than you need because now all three of my kids are out of the house and now it's just my husband and I and we don't eat near as much food um, it's very different when they come home for the holidays, but again, I'm prepared because I've been down that road. All right, so the other idea is to plan either your meals for the week or plan your meals for every three to four days. So it's difficult to 
go day to day and decide what you're going to eat because one of one of the times you have to understand or many of the times you have to understand is that we're going to be in a hurry we're all very very busy and to not be prepared means that you're you're failing you know, so what is the you plan to succeed or you plan to fail is failing to plan or let's see what is it if you fail to plan you pl you plan to fail there we go um so it's the same idea with anything but especially with foods because when you're hungry hangry or whatever um, when you're tired you're more likely to feel the need to just go through a drive through um, to just buy some frozen meals that aren't so healthy for you even let's say they're quote unquote vegan so we really want to stay away from the processed foods as we can so if you plan your meals in advance you do batch cooking either once or twice a week if you do it once a week you can freeze certain things like veggie burgers or soups or stews those type of things because they thaw well and then in the morning the night before um, or the morning before you leave to go to work or whatever your daily tasks are if you have a big thing of soup for the evening you can put it in the fridge and it'll slowly thaw you can also use um, a slow cooker lots of different ways to do different things you can even use mason jars set out your ingredients for a soup for later in the week if it's something you don't want to prepare in advance so lots of things think about how organization because organization will help you stay on track organization takes the stress out of it organization takes you having to use willpower to make you know prevent yourself from making bad choices and willpower is not the key here setting up your environment to succeed that's the key because willpower is a very finite amount and it does not take much to use it up throughout the day actually by morning <laughs> mine is pretty much gone so if i don't have my environment set up well i'm i'm doomed to fail so just keeping those things in mind and i'm sure many of you have some ideas as that um, and if you decrease your exposure to places with poor food choices, like planning and just buying what's on your shopping list instead of going impulse buying, you know, like five times a week at this grocery store, trust me, I do know people who do that, you're less likely to be exposed to those things and buy, oh, I'm hungry today. What's one little something, something, whatever. So, you know, just, just keep those things in mind. Um, Another thing, don't shop when you're hungry. I think that makes sense. But it's shown that if you eat a healthy snack in before shopping, you're more likely to buy healthy foods. So get an apple, buy some grapes, pear, banana, uh, I don't know, some carrot sticks, something. Eat that before you go to the grocery store because now you have it in your mind, I'm gonna eat healthy. Okay, so that's an idea there for you just to consider you know, a healthy snack before you go. Walk into the grocery store, and be exposed to all those other things. All right, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Cook at home. <laughs> number one, you know what's in your food. Number two, it's cheaper. And number three, it's a great time to really spend with your family and become organized with them and teach them how to cook. So my three kids now are 20, one's almost 25 in a few weeks. One will be 23 in April and one I have a 20 year old. They're all plant-based, they eat very healthy. Um, and the key for them was that they were in the kitchen since they were little and we, of course they weren't cooking always, but they would, they could certainly, you know, stage, um, each child to the appropriate things they can do to help with setting the table, washing the grapes, washing veggies, you know, as they get older, they're chopping. And it got to the point that I hate chopping onions so much. I would just make one of those kids do it. And so then now they've left and they've left me with that that ordeal. Of course, it's one of the gene bob G bombs, so we definitely want to be consuming that. So whatever you can do to bring the family in to help prep is really, really important. Um, because, you know, as a working mom, and I'm these are you guys are ladies, so I can <laughs> share with you that sentiment. Sometimes you're just exhausted, right? You're working full time jobs, you're trying to eat healthy, now you're trying to create healthy meals for your family. Bring them into the fold. We also had a rule, if you dirtied a dish, you better clean it up because I'm not your maid, I'm your mom. So keep that in mind. Is it, um, it's a really good rule to keep in mind just because if you have someone helping you, then guess what? You don't ever have to nag them because it's just expected. So you, you model those behaviors and it's up to you. My husband was always working. He was always in the kitchen when he could, but for the majority, it was me and the kids. And you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, they're, really actually pretty good little cooks now and i'm really proud of how they've turned out and and the um i guess you could say 
they've got some great habits because now when they go out to eat, um, they make healthy choices and I'm very, very excited about that. So it's worth it guys, hang in there if you have young children or teenagers, I promise you, if you model the behavior that you want them to do, um, they will follow. Okay, all right, here's some more. I kind of mentioned this earlier, you know, cook in large batches once a week so you have leftovers for the rest of the week and then use those to pack your lunch or to a dinner. Um, you can also repurpose your leftover, leftovers for new meals later in the week. And what I mean by repurpose is, let's say you make a batch of chickpeas, okay? And you have the plain chickpeas and one night you throw them in a stir fry. Another night you make some hummus and another night you throw them on a big salad. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to think about, well, how can I repurpose these things? We make big batches of quinoa, and typically there's some bean in the fridge, along with greens and chopped up veggies. Um, so just keeping those things in mind, what can I repurpose later in the week? So, you know, you have Italian one night, you have Mexican another night, and you have, I don't know, some Indian curries or something the next night. So just thinking about adding flavors. And, you know, another thing that's really nice is if you can buy, um, spices that are already blended so you get a curry flavor a mexican flavor italian you know herb blend those type of blends are typically cheaper than buying the individual so that'll leave that you know to you as to discover what your flavors are and that you enjoy um because i think honestly bringing lots of different flavors into your food is is so much fun because it really you learn a lot about palates and different cultures and um it's always a it's always a good thing <laughs> to expand your palate all right, okay. Um, also, just another, you know, that decreases your impulse to buy junk fast food, keeps money in your pocket and stress, and less stress about when you're eating. Let's see here, okay, when you're putting away your leftovers, I think that's really important too. Think about, well, if I'm gonna have this for lunch tomorrow, should I just go ahead and put it in a storage unit or storage container that I will be taking with me to lunch? You know, if you have a big bowl of soup, take out a smaller portion for you to grab and go the next morning. Because if you're in a hurry, for who knows whatever, many things go wrong in mornings, you may just want to, like, you'll be able to grab it. Even put it in your lunch bag if you want. Have everything, like, literally ready to walk out the door. All you have to do is grab it. Um, again, preparation is key. Um, we do, we want to plan for success and not for failure. So make it easy on yourself. When you're doing the task already and it takes an extra five seconds, just do it. Because once you do it, you'll be glad you did. Because it, the next morning, you're like, oh, well, this is great. Someone made me my lunch. Oh, yeah, it was me. Ah. Anyway, and so <laughs> I never said I was a comedian. Um, okay, so then let's see here. Ah, here we go. You want to buy in-season whole foods. Okay, so whole foods are the ones without the ingredient list and are often found in your produce section, obviously. Um, for the winters, you know, you're thinking winter squashes, butternut squash, you have... Uh, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, those type of things, uh, sweet potatoes, mm, later fall season, but whatever is in season in your area, because those are gonna be cheaper because there's more of them, they're more abundant. When you walk out of this season, you know, when you're moving into a different season, you'll see that prices will fluctuate because they try to keep the same amount of those foods, but they have to pay a little bit more, maybe because they have to ship them in from somewhere, and some other things there. So just keeping that in mind. You can also shop at farmer's markets and see what's in season in your area. Shop towards the end of the farmer market day because those souls do not want to help, you know, carry back all those foods. So you might be able to get a bargain on some of your favorite foods with the farmer, local farmer's market if you do it towards the end of the day. Now you'll have less to choose from maybe, so it's up to you. If you want more of a choice, go earlier, pay a little bit more. Later in the day, less of a choice, but you might save some few dollars. All right, um, let's see here. Again, even when you're buying foods um, in season, those are just gonna be more nutritious as well, right? Because they're closer to you. And let's see here, ah, some other things too. So when you're buying in season, if you buy too much, you can divide it and freeze it for future use. So in Colorado, where I was living before, and we're moving back this summer, so I'm so excited to go back home. Um, in the summer, or excuse me, in, in Colorado, Western Colorado, kale grows like weed. I've never seen kale, big kale, just grow. I don't think, honestly, I've never seen anything like it. Nothing, and I, 
I thought I, you know, you, it, it would convince you that you have a green thumb and you may kill everything else, but that kale will grow despite any human. <laughs> and, and of course, unless you have a fence, you need a fence to keep out the deer and the elk and different things. But um, what we would do with that instead, because we love smoothies as well, um, we took the kale and we would chop it up, blend it and put it in ice cubes. And so basically we'd have kale cubes. <laughs> you could do it with spinach, you could do it with anything. Um, so that's one thing, if you have a lot of fruit, you could chop it up, for example, bananas. If you have a, some bananas that are about to go too ripe for you, peel them, definitely peel them, um, and then chop them up to whatever size and consistency you want and put those in the freezer as well. That way you're gonna keep that food, again, extending its shelf life and making it useful in the future. So that is something there to consider. Now this is an interesting thing, and I don't think a lot of people consider what I'm about to say, is that when you buy generic in your grocery stores, um, some people think they have to buy the brand foods, and they don't. It's the same food, oftentimes coming from the same place. Um, so buy the generics, you know. Whole Foods has their brand, um, oh, I can't remember, what is it? Uh, I can't remember anyway. They have a brand, I don't go too much to Whole Foods, but then over here there is a QFC, which is also City Market, and up like I believe it's like the same type of store as like Publix. Um, they have Simply Organic, which is amazing. It's always cheaper, it's organic, it's a phenomenal brand, so or it's a generic brand. So I would definitely, you know, consider doing that. And then when you, um, when you do that, sign up for the little card at the grocery store. So what happens is they will want you to come back. So you have to think like a marketer. So if you sign up for those little cards, they're gonna send you coupons, but they're not gonna send you for coupons for things that you don't buy. They're gathering intelligence about you every time you buy something. So I buy lots of produce, tons and tons of produce. I buy frozen foods, like frozen fruits, frozen vegetables. I buy grains and I buy beans. This is literally what I buy and spices. Um, on an occasion, some laundry, <laughs> laundry soap. So what will happen is suddenly you start getting coupons in the mail for $20 off in your produce section. I'm not kidding you, I have received such things. Just last month I received three, one was $12 off produce, another was $14 off produce, and another was $12 off my entire grocery bill. That is great because when you start using that, for example, the last time I went to the grocery store, I saved on just with the school, the, the little coupons from the store that sent to me was like $36. I had $36, this adds up, okay? Um, I did, We didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up, so I've always been a coupon and it just, it's like, it's like I don't know, it's like a little, a little thrill, a little dopamine rush, I guess, when you get to save money. Um, but just something there to think about. And then if you can, you know, tell your patients this, how exciting to help them save money so they can spend it on more important things. Well, food is very important, but I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> All right. And then let's see here. Of course, I would tell other people, but you guys are in the nutritarian study. I don't have to tell you to stop buying processed food. <laughs> but the reason I would tell someone such a thing is because processed food means that there's an added layer that someone did something to that food. Beyond the fact that it's more nutrient poor, it's that that's an added cost to that food. So, you know, if you take an apple and convert it to applesauce, it's gonna cost more than the apple, right? So I could buy an apple and just throw it in my blender and I would get the same amount and maybe it's, you know, a quarter of the cost or less. Um, just thinking about that might be helpful. Um, ah, here we go. So stock on foods when they're on sale, if you have space. And if you're finding that there's particular foods that you like, like me and black beans, I've been friends for a very long time. Ever since I was a small child, I have loved black beans. So when I see that, you know, I go to QFC here and they've got the, there's little quad packs of these organic black beans in the can. And I don't mind eating canned beans. I'm, I work a lot of hours, I do a lot of different things. So I'm okay with eating canned beans, rinsing, low, low sodium, all that thing. But um, I will buy a large, large batch of them, I may buy 12 of them. It may take me three or four weeks to eat all of them, but I, I will do that. Because in the long run, I may save $10. You know, that's $10 I could put towards something else that maybe is a little bit more exotic, like the persimmons that come out once a year. They're expensive, but you know what? 
I love those things. I only get them, you know, a couple weeks out of the whole year. Hence, I'm going to be spending money on that. So look for other ways. But so my bill averages out to be about the same. Um, let's see here. Also, uh, you know, don't be afraid to buy frozen fruit and vegetables. Um, because one, you can use them in smoothies. Um, you can add them. They store longer. And oftentimes, they're just as nutritious as, or even more so than the fresh because they're flash frozen. So that's something there to think about as well. And let's see here. Okay, you might wanna consider buying food in the bulk section as well. Sometimes that's cheaper. And you can look on the price indicator in the grocery store, it'll tell you how much per ounce that you're buying. <clears throat> so you definitely wanna keep that in mind. Um, for example, nuts are often cheaper when you buy them out of the bulk section. Um, grains are cheaper when you buy them out of the bulk section. And then of course, dried beans are always cheaper in the bulk, I mean, pennies on the dollar. Um, cheaper. Again, this is all according to what will make you successful. Um, and we all have to make those choices for our, ourselves and our family. And then when you do use them, store them in, um, you know, airtight containers for future use. And you may want to, you know, look up your particular food and what is the optimal way for storage, like I had mentioned earlier. Storage is a big one, and I think we don't realize how much food waste we have in the United States. Um, I can't remember the amount, but it was in a significant amount of money that's lost per household um, just from food waste. Um, should have found that. Sorry about that, guys. And let's see here. Ah, growing your own food. I tell you, this is like growing money. So we eat a lot of kale. I was in Colorado. I grow things like tomatoes and other things, certain lettuces, radishes, things that would grow well in a very dry and high elevation or uh, climate. Um, but you may have a different thing wherever you are. If you're in an apartment, you grow your own herbs in. Um, you know, and then now they're having come up with these indoor gardening tools, which are just really cool. Maybe I'll try that. I tend to not have too much of a green thumb. So I applaud those efforts of others and am so thankful for when people can grow food that I can eat that's delicious. So um, keeping that in mind, that's helpful as well. Uh, sign up, we talked about the grocery store discount card. And then one last thing, so I'm married to someone who's Filipino, and I have been exposed to ethnic markets. So when I grew up um, in New Mexico, we, you know, there, there was, I could buy any type of spice that was Hispanic or Mexican spices anywhere, because that was the majority of the population. But then I discovered there was Indian markets, there's Asian markets. And if you wanna go buy jackfruit, that's where you go. There's certain Indian spices, that's where you go. And those are often much cheaper. And I would encourage you to check those out as well. And then let me see if there's anything left over here. Um, grow your own food, we talked about that. And yeah, I think that is it. So everyone, um, Tara says she's responding to comments here during the live session, and she's sending me also um, a Google Doc with you guys' questions. Here we go. All right, let me pull this up here. Okay, how long does a batch of beans or whole grains keep safely in the fridge? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would say, you know, if they're cooked, um, probably anywhere from three to five days. Um, I know that certain beans and certain grains will keep a little bit longer, but I would say you definitely save it three days. You might want to push it to five and see what happens. Ah, 365, that's, that's the brand at Whole Foods. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> All right, so Tara says about four days, and I would say you're right as well. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to scroll through. That's the part here. This will be a verified later. This will be um, available later. And I don't see other questions. Let's see here. Is there any other questions? Do I eat mushrooms every day? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, because mushrooms are super healthy for you. They help prevent certain types of cancers like breast cancers, but you don't need much. And of course you want them cooked, as we all say. Um, cooked would be um, maybe five per day, but you know, it doesn't take long, maybe a couple minutes steamed or sauteed in veggie broth. Virginia says, I freeze cooked grains and beans. 
Absolutely. I will freeze soups and all sorts of good stuff. So it's not as a big deal now that there's down to two of us from five up. I had up to seven at one point in the house. So trust me, I was big into batch cooking and however I could say. Are canned mushrooms as good as fresh? I buy the can from Costco. You know, that's actually a really good question. Um, I don't know. I haven't really looked at the nutrient profile of those. I typically buy fresh um, because I don't use the can before, actually. I don't think I've ever bought canned mushrooms. That's actually a really good question. There was not a Costco near me, so I never... There used to be a long, long time ago when I lived in Virginia when I was in the military, but... Um, I'm not really sure, and I'm sorry, Sharon, I don't know, I hate to tell people um, one thing and not the other. I'm not, I don't know the exact truth on the nutrient quality. Then again, I will eat beans that are canned, so. All right, any other questions? <clears throat> you guys are great. Let's see here. Do you guys have any other Sorry again um, for those who are going to watch later about the being sideways in the beginning. So, do you guys have any particular um, budget-friendly tips that you would like to share with others here that I didn't mention? <clears throat> because I'll tell you, the one place I really think you can do very well is Aldi's. Um, they have different foods, different times, but they, you can get really good food there, very, very reasonably cost. So, all right. Tara, do you have any other questions that aren't posted here? Let's see here, it's 2.33. I know we want to keep it about half hour. Well, I sure do thank you guys for listening and I hope it was helpful. Um, I didn't want this to be a normal, another to say eat this, eat that, because you guys already know that. Um, I want this to be something that you can think about and really move, um, you know, the make it easier, make that finish line easier to do every day. Different nutritional value of packaged pre-chopped veg versus fresh, like red cabbage. Um, and Mary asked that question, so it's interesting. So when you look at certain things, <clears throat> excuse me, cabbage probably wasn't the, the biggest, I wouldn't worry so much, but certain um, cruciferous, like kale, or not kale, but uh, broccoli, and certain ones that when you chop them, they become more nutritious and you need to let them sit for maybe 40 minutes to actually bring the nutritional content to the highest level. When they're frozen and chopped, they may not um, take the time to allow them to do that. So that's where I would say like broccoli and cauliflower, you might wanna chop them at home and let them sit. And you know, you're, you may not be able to get the same nutritional quality on certain chopped vegetables. Um, Cindy says, I don't know if it was mentioned, buying storable, freezable produce at local restaurant supply. Oh, wow. Like 25 pound potatoes, three pound bag broccoli. You know what? That's actually really, really a good idea. Um, there was a, uh, natural grocery store in Colorado and they would sell this huge bag of quinoa. I mean, it's like a $25, you know, 25 pound bag for like 30 bucks. It was like almost a dollar a pound, which was really cheap for me back then to even get it to where I was living. So I think pretty sure that was around it was. It was I just remember it being much cheaper than buying the smaller packages of the quinoa because we were, we went to a serious quinoa phase. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for listening. If there's any last questions, I'll hang on. If not, oh, I did want to mention, um, if any of you are struggling to help, you need some questions about doctors and different things. I'm also doing telemedicine. I work for a telemedicine company called Doctor On Demand and I see any patient. It's, there's an app, it's called Doctor On Demand. You can download. I'm licensed in 13 states, uh, Washington, California, Colorado, Arkansas, Texas, Virginia, Florida, Georgia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, New York. Oh, I'm sure I'm missing something in there. But those, um, you can see where I am listed. So if any of you have any questions and you're like, I can't find a helpful plant-based doc, feel free to find me there. I have several folks that have found me on Facebook, um, Cyrus and Robbie from Mastering Diabetes. I see a lot of their folks as well, so. Ah, Virginia says, diagnosed with osteoporosis, I'm choosing not to take meds, nutrition for me. And that is brilliant. Thank you for 
being part of this. Uh, let's see here. Do you think the Nutritarian Protocol provides protection from breast cancer recurrence versus prescription? Um, I would say so, because if you think about cancer and the different reasons that it would recur are oftentimes the same reasons that they would start in the beginning. So if you're eating a nutritarian diet in this very, very high nutrient dense foods daily, you're gonna be doing everything in your power to prevent the recurrence of breast cancer. Absolutely most important thing you can do is feed your body well. What vegetables should we buy organic? So there, are, if you go to ewg.org, uh, it's an environmental working group, there is a dirty dozen and a clean 15 list. I would buy the dirty dozen organic. Um, that will give you a really good idea because we want to try and stay away from the, um, you know, the herbicides and all the pesticides that they're spraying on our food these days. Uh, Doctor on Demand, Jan, that's the name of it. Doctor on Demand. I am not licensed in New Mexico. I'm sorry. Okay. And then um, my other website, if you guys need any other information that we have or want to refer people to you, is healthyhumanrevolution.com. We also have a page. We do live videos every week answering questions. So those are at Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's Anthony and I. Anthony lost 160 pounds. And then, of course, I'm the doc on there. So be happy to answer questions there as well. So always looking to educate. So any other questions before I go, Tara? Is that it? I think that's everything. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, thank you all for watching. I so appreciate your time. And if you have any other questions, I'm sure Tara will send me a follow-up and we can see what I can do to help out there too. So you guys have a great day. Tara, if there's anything else I need to do, I'm gonna assume not. All right, well, thank you guys. Have a great day.